idea that ideas are a plentiful natural resource with great potential to improve the health and wealth of nations. And un unfortunately, unlike other natural resources, they don't get used up, can be, but can be increased endlessly and improved endlessly. So knowledge building is a research-based educational approach that gives students a role in this creative process. It engages students directly in the means by which knowledge is advanced in the world. The evidence we have uh, at this point shows that creative collaborative work with ideas previously reserved for a few can be a normal and central part of education at all levels at all students. In addition to students as idea creators, not just acquirers or users of others' ideas, students' ideas can be on trajectories that intersect with ideas of communities working at the cutting edge of their field. And that's what I would like to try to give you some sense of how we are trying to accomplish that in some new work with this design experiment. So engaging the global community requires ideas rising and advancing through a coherent public layer of work. That's how we get to this challenge expressed on the right here of <clears throat> ideas at the intersect of global distributed communities. So, the idea here is that ideas from local communities will help advance ideas and discoveries. And teams of scientists, researchers, and engineers will help demonstrate the uh, power of our collective work. Now, I'm going to take you into some work of four sites. Um, these are selected because they are uh, uh, distributed in the world. Uh, one is in Toronto, the Jackman Institute of Child Study at the University of Toronto. Another, others, uh, there are a collection of sites in Singapore, a Canada-Mexico collaboration, and um, the Mishner Institute, which is also here at the University of Toronto. It's a university health network, um, and they're dealing currently with the sciences of COVID. And I mention them in particular because um, they're a university enterprise. And in the work that we're talking about, it's really great to be able to integrate what I'm calling benchmark sites and discourses, that is, um, we're talking at the Jackman Institute, for example, of elementary students, grades one to six uh, in Singapore, some high school sites in Mexico elementary. And so this notion that we also have a university health network and we can see how ideas align within the spaces framing all the way from uh, grade one uh, up through um, a, a very advanced university health network. Now for a first level integration and finding ideas at the intersect, um, we can use da data mining. So what we're trying to do here is just find far and near conceptual neighbor, uh, neighbors through the digitized um, discourses we have available. So we can use any discourse. We can use online discourse, face-to-face -face discourse, as long as it's uh, uh, been translated text. So what we want to know is what are the problems? What are the issues that are being dealt with at these different sites? Most convenient uh, is if we have students working in online environments where we have naturally occurring discourses and digitized resources. And from these resources, the data mining will give us some sense of what are the concepts that they are talking about at these different sites. So you can see uh, the young students at the Jackman Institute are talking about water cycles and biodiversities and plants and cells. In Singapore, in their design studio, they're talking about sustainable farming, bioengineering. Um, and so just to give you some sense then, you can see what themes uh, are being talked about. 
but we've got to get to second level exploration. That is, these are just themes and themes can stay fairly shallow and show lots of connections, uh, but they don't necessarily say, what are the big problems that are being dealt with? Now, this is a kind of uh, strange slide that might not make sense, actually would not make sense. But uh, what I want to convey is in the technology that we're using, in this particular case, it's knowledge form, you can easy, easily build a little scaffold. So this is a cutting edge Google search scaffold that students can use. And they can search for breakthroughs and research advances and scientific discoveries and ideas about what no one else seems to know. And we can use such uh, supports to get students to take these themes, enter them into searches, and find discoveries. So this doesn't actually exist. I'm imagining how we might engage students. What I'm showing you is what I did. This is ex uh, exactly how I proceeded. I just put some words uh, in the words from the thematic themes into Google searches. And I could hardly believe all of the fun things, not just fun, but really advanced work that uh, uh, was really interesting. So for instance, I discovered that there is such a thing as low carbon grain. I hadn't heard of that before. I discovered that there are super enzymes that eat plastics and scientists are actually creating these mutant enzymes. Um, in simply doing the search of um, uh, poverty, and I forget whatever uh, other thematic word I used, but um, there's such a thing as carbon offset child labors. Again, I didn't know this, but it turns out that the carbon offset industry actually can only exist by keeping the poor poor and heavy utilization of child labor. Um, I learned about the circular economy, which uh, goes from a linear um, um, take, make, dispose to recyclable plastic, where they're actually um, disassembling plastics into their constituent parts at the molecular level. So this is just giving you a sense that from those thematic uh, ideas, we get much closer to cutting edge research in the world uh, by uh, doing these ideas at the intersect along trajectories to discoveries uh, in the broader world. Now, I'm going to do this one more time uh, because a point I'd like to make, we have nearby neighbors, both at the University of Toronto, the Missioner Institute that I mentioned, and the Jackman Institute, which is grades one through six. So here we have nearby partners, physically, but far conceptual neighbors. So the young children are dealing with salmon and salmon and graphing and world affairs, while the uh, uh, missioner in its current uh, work is working at uh, on uh, advanced sciences of COVID and the pathology of uh, poverty. So, what in the world could possibly come up if I do my little Google search and do salmon and COVID? Well, same phenomenon. I discovered that salmon may harbor infectious coronavirus. I had never thought of that before. And that salmon could actually be a host for the virus. And this is creating a great deal of uh, research on uh, issues of um, uh, economic issues. I also discover that the connection, the really simple uh, connection between some of the issues students were dealing with in uh, world affairs connected with poverty brings out uh, really important issues about deep inequalities that make society as a whole more vulnerable. And the effects uh, climate change is uh, having on a redistribution of life on Earth. Now, Again, the point I'm trying to make is by putting ideas at the intersect on these trajectories, it's possible to create um, a uh, continual improvement of ideas, which is exactly the kind of work that we're trying to advance. So 
Design experiment challenges from this perspective require that schools be joined to other organizations devoting may, um, to making progress on major world issues. Now, I want to say they're not literally joined. Their ideas are joining them in creating new kinds of um, discoveries. Um, and the fact that education actually needs new means to help students see the big, big picture, have some sense that their ideas actually do connect uh, to a worldwide knowledge advancement. So they have a sense of belonging to this larger uh, uh, society of knowledge creators. Um, we're imagining a global website, a meta space. Uh, here's uh, uh, some thoughts. Uh, uh, so that we would have access to, in each local community, we're exploring the possibility of creating a public layer um, of the work they're doing. Again, for us, since the students are on working in an online community, um, we can create a public layer of that online community, but th these could take many forms. We're just starting to explore. But what we really have is a team, um, and again, we're depending on global communities, and we would hope you could see yourself possibly in this and join us in this uh, um, design experiment. But the idea is that teachers, researchers, scientists, engineers, policy making uh, makers, and cutting edge partners uh, will help co-design a realistic model of students advancing ideas for public good. I'm imagining, for instance, if you went into the two sites I've shown you, that on their online environment, they would have at least one site that was open to anybody in the global network. And that's uh, what this is meant to show. Um, so now I'm going to shift into another aspect of um, this work. So if this knowledge building is going on. And if it's going on in all of these varied contexts, then we will have um, uh, discourses from very uh, broadly distributed sites. But one might also ask with how busy all communities are, could they really take time to be engaged in such a design experiment? And what would that mean for the things that they actually are caring about? I'm sure design experiments are the last thing on people's minds, given that uh, they're dealing with so many complexities in each of their sites. So the other aspect of this um, design experiment will be to take things that uh, uh, educators actually care about and show how we could actually make advances at that level based on the uh, work that they're already doing. So I've listed a number of things. Some are bolded in red and I'll explain why in a minute. But when we ask teachers, what are the things they care about uh, right now? These are the things they care about. Meeting curriculum expectations, how to cope with distance learning in this uh, um, new era of um, uh, COVID education, 21st century competencies. And the goal is to collectively in a global experiment show that we can indeed address these issues and we can make these kinds of advances. So pre post like uh, before they're engaged in such work and after they are engaged in such work, what are the kinds of advances. Um, so again, this is not an actual uh, graph of what we have done. It's a dreamed of graph of what we will do as a global community working to, uh, together 